thanks for sharing your garden, or in this case, your ponds with us. That pond will be featured in the Austin Pond Society's upcoming tour. And here to talk about the tours are Kathy Reagan and Carl Tinsley from the Austin Pond Society. Welcome back to Central Texas Gardener. Hi, Tom. Thanks. Thanks. This is a great day on the Austin gardening calendar. And this year you have a spectacular lineup of ponds. And we're just going to dive in and start showing people some of these wonderful places that they can visit. Carl, the first pond that we're featuring here uh, is an immediate eye catcher. I've never seen an entry pond before like this. Yes, it's one of the most unique ponds I've ever seen uh, on the tour. And uh, the, at this house, they re their entire entry courtyard to their house is a formal tiled pond with a marble slab walkway suspended over the top of it. It's just amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like something out of uh, medieval Spain or something like that. It's absolutely beautiful. Yes, and it has a, a weeping wall and also an observation deck and stuff. So when people see it, they're just going to be amazed. Yeah, you know, no weeping wall has disappearing fountains with beautiful ceramic uh, vessels. Absolutely beautiful, uh, spectacular entry to this particular pond. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a great way to kind of entice people to go to the Austin Pond Society tour. Kathy, when's it going to be this year? Uh, it's June 8th and 9th, uh, Saturday and Sunday. There will be ponds open from 9 to 5 on Saturday and Sunday, the north on Sunday, on Saturday, pardon me, and the south on Sunday. Okay. And there will also be two ponds open on Saturday night from 8 to 1030. Okay. And people can learn all about this at the Austin Pond Society website? That's right. Uh, AustinPondSociety.org. All right, and so all the details are there, how people can get the tickets, et cetera. Let's dive back into the ponds here and, and take a look at the next one. This is The next one is a hill country pond. It's owned by a couple named Phil and Linda. Why don't you describe this one for That's me? That's right. They're uh, in the Anderson Mill area in uh, North Austin, and they have uh, developed their backyard to be a nice, relaxing place. Bruce goes out there and drinks his coffee and watches the pond every single morning. But it has uh, two ponds connected by a stream and uh, the the water is directed into the lower pond that has fish in it and they have maidenhair ferns. It's just a gorgeous, relaxing place for their backyard. Okay, well, and exactly what people want from a pond. That's right. You know, That's that sense right. of tranquility. And uh, one of the cool features of the Pond Society Tour is that a lot of the owners will be out there and they can describe how they did it, right? That's right. And most of the ponds that we have on the tour this year are owner built. Mm -hmm. So they put their sweat and tears in and they really enjoy sharing that experience with people who come to visit. Of course, of course. The next pond we're going to be talking about is owned by Mike and Andrea. This is a small formal pond with bog and lots of koi, right? Yeah, it's a really interesting what you can do in a, in a small space with a fairly small pond. Um, but it's, uh, it's a formal pond, meaning it's not made to look natural. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a small pond, it has several very large koi in it. So it shows you with the right filtration and the right design that you can support large koi. Most people think you need a much larger space. Right, right. Now, one thing, Kathy, I know that's an issue. A lot of people want ponds, but they have trees, and they think that they can't have a pond underneath a tree. The next one we're going to be talking about, uh, owned by Mike and Ursula, actually is in the shade, right? Exactly. It's a little uh, small pond, and people think you have to have huge ponds, too, but theirs is only 600 gallons. Mm -hmm. It's nestled underneath a really large oak tree, and his idea of putting the pond there was so that it looked like you were on a ranch and you just happened upon this spring that came up uh, mm -hmm. in the corner of the ranch. So it is possible to have it under under trees, and it is there are some advantages to that. For instance, you don't get the algae problems that a lot of people have with sun ponds. Right. Well, and again, it has that sense of a little hidden oasis, right, which I right. think is really special. One of the really cool things about his pond, too, is uh, he doesn't have goldfish and koi. He went out to Brushy Creek, and he got sunfish and and bass and put those in his pond. <laughs> I think that's very so cool. That's very interesting. Well, this is truly a regional pond tour. The next pond we're going to be talking about is in Hutto. This is uh, owned by a, a gentleman named Scott. Tell me about this one. Yeah, this one is very interesting because it's a brand new build. He just started to build it in March, if you can imagine that, and is on the <laughs> pond tour. But uh, it's really interesting because it's all masonry. He's mm -hmm. done it uh, from uh, sandstone stones, and it's a two tier pond that is right nestled 
nestled up to next to the deck. So I'm personally anxious to go back and see it with all of the plants in it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be spectacular. Okay, so uh, this is a brand new brand addition. New. And you get to talk to the owner who will be, I think, a little enthusiastic if it's brand <laughs> new. That's, that's right. Okay, the next one is in the Lakeway area, and this is uh, owned by a gentleman named Bruce, and it uh, includes uh, dry creek beds, multiple ponds. Right. Now, Bruce had, uh, had come... Uh, to a, a realization after the wildfires in 2011 that he had to do something with the cedar trees to get them away from his house. So he cleared all of those out and uh, wondered what was he going to do with all of this space. So he ended up uh, putting in a pond and he's incorporated a rain harvesting system, uh, dry creek beds, he's zero scaped his whole yard mm -hmm. and it's just absolutely spectacular. He's done it all himself on a very low budget with materials that he found around his property, a lot of plants donated by his neighbors and it's just something that's very, very spectacular, and you don't want to miss that one. Well, I was very impressed when I saw this, especially when I heard that he had done this all himself. Right. He uh, has done it all within the last year, so it's really spectacular. Well, uh, again, a really cool one to add to the list, and again, kind of uh, helps with the regional nature of the, of the, the tour. Right. The next one is one that will be on that, uh, the night uh, uh, tour, and this is owned by Betty and Ralph. Right. Now, Betty and Ralph have something completely different from anything else that you'll see on the tour. They've converted their backyard into a complete outdoor room. Uh, they used a flagstones to make a pervious of floor so that mm -hmm. the rain can get through to feed the trees. Their pond is in the middle of this floor. They have a dining area with uh, fans over the dining area and over the bar. They've mm -hmm. built a potting shed okay. that is a great big uh, white rock room that's built around a uh, an oak tree and they use it to overwinter their plants as well as to store their uh, their uh, tools in but uh, it's something spectacular it's a certified wildlife habitat as well and their front yard is xeriscaped with a very interesting graphic design that shows that xeriscape doesn't have to be uh, very sterile or or uh, you know country looking. Okay. And I was, I had never seen uh, that kind of uh, fancy or elaborate uh, gravel work that actually looks like European inspired designs in the gravel. I yeah. think that's very cool. Yeah. Well, it, it, this one is really special and uh, I do love the way that they uh, incorporated the pond space because it's got a, a kind of for, uh, informal, formal quality at the exactly. same time. Exactly. Really very yeah. nice. It's, it's also uh, one of the ponds that's on the night tour that mm -hmm. night, so seeing it lit up will add a lot okay. of drama yeah. to it. The uh, next one was featured as a, uh, one of our featured uh, ponds last year, and actually we created a, a nice a video of it, uh, mm -hmm. and this is one that incorporates lots of vessels and, and pots. Right. They have a 5,000 gallon pond, regular pond, but they also have about 25 different kinds of vessels that they have made little water features out of. Uh, one at their front door is a blue pot that is fed by a rain chain that comes off the gutter. And uh, Gary has rigged up a real interesting way to feed that pot, so you'll want to ask him about that when you go out there. But they also have a Civil War era cannibal pot that okay. they've made into a water feature, and that's something you'll really want to find out what that is. I'm, I'm afraid to ask questions <laughs> about a cannibal pot. <laughs> the Bastrop is in the tour this year as well. Yes, that's our farthest south and farthest east uh, we've ever had the tour go mm -hmm. out. But the pond that's out there, uh, owned by BJ and Sam, uh, is really spectacular. Another new pond that was just built last year. Uh, it features two ponds connected by a stream and what I think is most interesting about it is the two ponds are actually separate. They look like they're connected. Uh, the bridge over the stream hides the fact that they are actually two separate ponds. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easy if, uh, if there's a problem with one pond or the other, they can shut the one down and uh, transfer the, the plants and the fish over to the other one while they work on it. I plan to expand my own pond and I want to do that same trick. That way you have, uh, you can add on without having to shut your whole pond down while well, you do it. Well, th this is really a lovely uh, pond, actually a series of ponds, and it's on the edge of a golf course. Yes, it's just it's a beautiful a, setting. Yes. Beautiful setting and beautiful It's town well worth the trip to Bastrop. All right. Uh, and and we have a, a one out in Steiner Ranch as well, owned by Ted and, and Michelle. Right, and this pond was on the tour in 2009, but he at that time he only had the one 5,000-gallon koi pond. He's added two ponds 
pond since then. So that's one thing that's important for people to understand is just because a pond has been on the tour before, don't miss going to it because pond owners never stop changing their <laughs> pond. Right. There's always something new to see. So he has two additional ponds with a waterfall going into that uh, main koi pond. And uh, it's a spectacular setting. He's built it all of himself and uh, some really interesting plants around it as well. Great, great. And then we're going to uh, conclude talking about the ponds with a, a garden that I have seen and uh, design and with the water features designed by David Mahler. And I have to say, the, uh, one of the most artful uh, uh, designers I've ever seen in terms of ponds and stonework and streams. Uh, David just does spectacular work. Mm -hmm. Yes, this uh, location is just amazing, and it's in uh, Westlake Hills, owned by Dan and Paula. Um, it's the largest pond installation on the tour, I believe. Uh, the he has a starts with a pond up in front of the house that runs into a stream that appears to disappear underneath the house, and then as you walk around to the back side of the house, there's actually a grotto built into the back of the house itself. And the grotto, I have to say, this is something that should not be missed by anybody on the tour. It's it's, absolutely, if you have the opportunity to see this, you have to go. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. There are trails leading uh, all around the, the stream and ponds continue on down the hillside. And Westlake Hills is a great place for dramatic uh, water movement. And uh, Dave Mahler and uh, some of his people will be there to answer questions about that installation. Well, it, it, it genuinely uh, is superb, as are all the ponds that we've looked at here. This is an impressive assortment that you've lined up this year. Again, it's a two-day event. Mm -hmm. Give us the date again real quickly. June 8th and 9th. All right. Saturday day and Sunday day from uh, 9 to 5. Saturday night from 8 to 10.30. And, and the ponds, are, is, uh, are the, all the ponds open on both days? No, the north ponds are open oh. on Saturday okay. and the south on Sunday. You can go to our website at austinpondsociety.org, get all the information as well as download a brochure. Okay, well, uh, continued great work and congratulations on yet again another spectacular Austin Pond Society tour. Thanks so much for coming on the program and sharing all this good information with us. I think there are going to be a lot of people out there starting ponds this year <laughs> in Central <laughs> Texas. So thanks again, Kathy, and good to see you and welcome back. And uh, now we're going to turn it over to our friend Daphne.